We have a very special uh, friend here with us, a new, newly ordained priest of Norbertine Abbey here at uh, De Pere, Father Mike Brennan. And we are very glad to have Father Mike Brennan with us to celebrate this Holy Mass for us and with us. Also, his parents are present here, I hope. Maybe. They're usually late. Okay. <laughs> so, on behalf of the whole parish community, uh, I would like to welcome him with uh, flowers and I invite Micah and Miranda to present Father Mike with flowers. Are they? Oh, they're coming. So we begin the way we begin so many good things, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. This morning, we will be invited to hear Christ both in the chaos and in the slight whispering sound. So for those moments when we have failed to recognize Christ, both in the noise and in the silence, for when we have turned our backs on Christ, we now pause to acknowledge those moments and to ask for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God for, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your daughters and sons, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. And when Elijah heard this, he hid his face in his cloak, and he went and he stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. will give his benefits, our land shall yield its increase, justice shall walk before him, and prepare the way of his steps.
You don't like it and read the gospel. Thank you. Sorry. It is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. Theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God bless it forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them. Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of us are familiar with the saying, the calm before the storm. Today, we're invited to think about the storm before the calm. How so? Why? Well, with Elijah atop the mountain of God, there's an earthquake. There's wind that breaks stones. I'm glad I've never experienced that wind. 
There is a fire. It's a chaotic place atop that mountain. With the disciples on the boat, perhaps on the Sea of Galilee, or the boat, as we say here in Wisconsin or northern Minnesota, they're on the boat, and it's a very chaotic scene. Did you hear the words? The fourth watch of the night. It's the darkest part of the night. The word terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. The waves were tossing them about, tossing us about as we listened. We know maybe we haven't been atop the mountain. Maybe we haven't been in a storm in a boat. But we have certainly experienced chaos. Turn on the news for less than five minutes. Our president and the North Korean leader are threatening our world with very dangerous and chaotic threats. Threats of nuclear war. Down in our, or throughout our country, we're in the midst of chaos of race relations. Better this year until this event last night in Virginia where there was a neo-Nazi riot and people run over by a car because we can't look at each other as one, as members of the same human family. Instead, we emphasize our difference. There's chaos in our country, chaos in our world. There's chaos in our homes, amidst our families. Be that our family of origin, and it could be the simple chaoses of everyday life. Getting to church on time, mom and dad. <laughs> um, preparing for school. Summer, unfortunately, is coming to an end, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at that transition. But there's the more serious chaoses that we deal with. The loss of a loved one. We have a beloved Norbertine who's been on his deathbed for the last several weeks. One of these days, he will slowly fade away. That's chaotic in our Norbertine house. You have that in your homes with your loved ones. Or an unexpected illness. We live in a world of chaos. So what, Father Mike? So where's the good news in that? Well, the good news that I'd like to share with you today is two invitations. The first invitation is that when we bring the bread and the wine forward to the altar today, each and every time that bread and wine is brought forward to the altar, we're invited to bring our entire self and place it upon this altar. So whatever chaos is in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, bring that chaos and place it on the altar. Perhaps you want to shout out to God like Peter did today as you place that upon the altar and say, save me, Lord, from this chaos. But it's not only our chaos that we bring up to the altar. We are a blessed people. So as I got you thinking about the chaos that exists in our lives, also think about the ways that you're blessed. Because all of us are a combination of our blessedness and our brokenness. Place your blessedness upon this altar today and every day when the gifts are brought up. That's the whole reason we bring the gifts from amongst the assembly. The gifts are but a representation of who we are. Each and every time the body or the bread and the wine are transformed into the body and blood, we are transformed more into the body of Christ. Place yourself upon the altar today. The second invitation is one that many of us are no longer comfortable with. 
And it goes to our first reading, where Elijah heard and found God in the tiny, whispering sound. So for the next two or three minutes, and I invite you to not look at your watch, we're going to take an opportunity to have two or three minutes of silence together. And I won't instruct you any more than that, other than to listen for God in a tiny whispering sound. Together we stand to profess our faith in the God that exists in the silence, the God that exists amongst the noise. I believe God, the Father all. that you hear our prayers. We now bring these prayers, the prayers of this local church, 
and join them with the prayers of the Church Universal. For the Church, the charge of St. Peter, that it will be protected and strengthened wherever she is persecuted, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to terrorism in the world, that God will bring peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are traveling by sea, land, or air, that they will be kept safe, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve our country in the armed forces, that God will bless them and keep them out of harm's way, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Callie, Bannon Brannon, and Cody Verhayen, who were married yesterday, for all married couples, for strong marriages and families, that God will give them strength in their trials, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For recently ordained Father Mike Brennan, along with his family and his Norbertine community, that the Holy Spirit guide him in his ministry to bring Christ to others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially for the members of Our Lady of Lourdes Parish family, that they may enjoy Jesus' presence and be brought into his heavenly kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions with the, which are in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we trust that you heal all, hear all of our prayers, those spoken aloud and those that rest in the silence of our hearts. We ask that you continue to shower down your blessings upon us and to answer these prayers according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 